Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and in this video, I'm going to be doing a review and glucose test of the Old El Paso Carb Advantage Hard Taco Shells. The old El Paso Carb Advantage taco shells are something that nine times out of 10, I would look at the ingredients list and put back on the shelf. However, I have had numerous requests to do a review and glucose test on this. And also kind of like the English muffins in last week's video review, it's just, it's something that I would kind of like to be able to have as a convenience. I mean, yeah, I could make my own hard shells and I've done it before in a video, but sometimes just being able to grab something off the shelf feels good. Before I get to the taste test and glucose test, let's take a look at the nutritional information and ingredients. Serving size is two shells, there are 10 in the package, 90 calories, five grams of total fat, 17 grams of total carbohydrates, of which 11 are dietary fiber for a net six, and one gram of protein. Now the risk with trusting net carbs on a package is the FDA allows for a fairly liberal definition of what is fiber. So is this fiber going to affect my glucose or not? Let's take a look at the ingredients. Corn bran, modified tapioca starch. That could be a problem. In fact, a lot of the things on this ingredient list could be a problem. Palm oil. Now here's a little tip. If you see palm seed oil, that's, or palm kernel oil, that is one of the typical highly processed seed oils that I tend to avoid. However, if it just says palm oil, that is palm fruit oil, and that is a good oil, provided it's harvested sustainably. Limed corn flour, soluble corn fiber, yellow corn grits, pea protein, yellow corn flour, xanthan gum, cellulose gum, and salt. So these definitely do not fall under the umbrella of keto. Low carb, yes. Keto, not so much. The question is, could it be an occasional treat on a ketogenic diet without dramatically impacting my blood glucose, ketones, or causing me inflammation? So to give these a proper test, I'm going to eat a full serving, so two taco shells, plain. I don't think there's ever been a time in my life, even pre-keto, where I've craved a plain taco shell, but that's what we're gonna do right here. I don't know if these get better once you bake them, but uh, man, these are not good. Not good at all. Um, First off, the crunch is not like a regular corn tortilla taco shell. It is, uh, it's really sticking to my teeth. The chew on it was not very crunchy past the first bite. Just overall, it's like this pasty, powdery, not very corn tasting sort of thing going on in my mouth. So I'm not real thrilled about the prospect of eating two of these plain, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I am wearing a Dexcom G7 continuous glucose monitor, so I'm gonna measure my glucose continuously over the next two hours. And then I'm gonna wait, rather than come back in two hours and, and show you what happened, I'm gonna wait till tomorrow just to see if I feel any sort of inflammation effects as well from these. But uh, yeah, I guess it's time for me to eat the rest of this taco shell, and I'll be back in the next segment. All right, I am back, and full disclosure, I have already looked at what the glucose results were from yesterday when I ate those tacos. Now, in addition to using a Dexcom G7, I am also using the Levels Health app, which does a more in-depth analysis of what you're eating and your overall metabolic health. I will include a link to that down below in the description if you'd like more information on the Levels Health program, including their CGM program. But now, let's take a look at how these taco shells performed. Levels Health gave it a 9 out of 10. That's an excellent score, stable response. Honestly, I'm right on the edge of shocked. Based on the ingredient list on these taco shells, I was expecting to see a really substantial spike. But how big was it? Let's go into details. All right, we can see that I started at a 90, 90 milligrams per deciliter and peaked at 109, so 19 points of glucose movement. Generally, 30 is considered a spike. This also stayed under the 110 milligram per deciliter threshold that Levels considers important. Now, 19 points of movement, that's, that's acceptable. I don't know that I would give it a nine. I think I would probably call that a gentle rise. Let's take a look at the Dexcom app, which doesn't provide as much information, 
but the scale, the y-axis scale you can see there on the side is, is a lot larger, which makes this look considerably flatter. But what about my ketones? Well, here are my ketones from this morning, a 1.9. So generally anything from about 0.5 to 1.5 is considered nutritional ketosis, 1.5 to 3 is considered optimal ketosis, and I am still in optimal ketosis. The next concern that I had about this, based on the ingredients, is would I have some sort of an inflammatory response, which generally I feel in my knees, hips, knuckles, sometimes elbows, but no. Went out for a run this morning, did three miles, felt nothing. Nothing in the knees, nothing in the hips, felt great. So my next test is gonna be, do these taco shells get any better once they've been heated up or baked and got some taco meat in it? Which I've got right there. So let's make a taco. I air fried the taco shell for three minutes at 380 degrees Fahrenheit. It is looking nice and golden. So we will add some taco meat, a little shredded cheddar cheese. Yes, this is American style, not authentic Mexican. And finally, a little bit of sour cream along the top. So let's see if these are any better now that they've been cooked. The crunch is definitely better. Just the overall chew. It's still sticking to my molars just a little bit, but I'm not getting that same pasty texture that I got when I ate these uncooked. Also, still not a lot of corn flavor. In fact, I'd be hard pressed to recognize any corn flavor in this. Now, I'm not totally in love with these, but I do like them, and I'm really kind of surprised at what a stark difference there is between what these tasted like uncooked and now baked. These, uh, these are pretty legit. So what are my final thoughts on the Old El Paso Carb Advantage taco shells? I'm surprised, honestly. I, I, first off, I'm surprised the glucose response wasn't more significant. Second, I'm surprised at how much better these are baked versus just out of the package. I'm thrilled that they didn't cause me any sort of inflammation and didn't have any impact on my ketones. So while the ingredient list is a long, long way from clean keto, and some may argue it's not even keto at all, as a low-carb taco shell, I'm pretty happy. I mean, like I said, it's it checked all the boxes for me outside of ingredients. And at least for me, I think this will make a nice occasional treat to have an, a hard taco shell that isn't going to impact my ketogenic lifestyle. So if any of you have tried out these taco shells, I'd be curious to hear your opinion or read your opinion down in the comments below, especially if you've done any sort of glucose testing. So like I said, let me know in the comments down below. But that is gonna be it for this video. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, please click that like button. If you're not a subscriber already, tap that subscribe button, then hit the bell to turn on all notifications. And speaking of notifications, I would encourage you to sign up for the Serious Keto Newsletter. It comes out once a week and it's not spam. I won't sell your email address to anybody. It just keeps you up to date with everything that's going on with the channel. Link down below in the description. Thanks for watching.